um, Iris Chen, um, she's Asian, uh, did a session called Unschooling the Tiger Parent. And I love I love this session because as a Asian, like we're all like, oh yeah, everything's got to be super strict. We're all about tiger parenting, like high levels of control. Un she calls it untigering. <laughs> she actually has a book out on this one. It's, it's a very interesting one. The action items that I took away uh, from this session, number one, is we need to talk about how we were tiger parented and how we are passing the baton and tiger parenting our own children. The second is we need to do projects based on our child's interests. And we need to connect that to what they need to learn uh, to get to the next steps. And the third is we need to empower our kids to choose their own path and allow them to fail if they choose not to do things like their homework. And fourth is we need to look at how empowering our kids helps us reduce our own anxiety around the outcomes. And this is, this is what I was talking about before. So in 1840, Horace Mann, um, you many know, was the secretary of the Massachusetts Board of Education. He traveled to Prussia, seeking a way to transform these unruly children into disciplined citizens. The Prussian educational system sought to create obedient workers and soldiers, well-subordinated servants and clerks, and citizens who all thought alike. Again, thinking alike, very important in the Prussian system of education. So de-schooling or unschooling is about recognizing our child's innately curious nature and realizing that we don't need to be a taskmaster. We need to trust them to lead the way. And we can find education not only in the, in the classroom, in the school, but we can find it in nature and outside of the classroom. Um, Iris's message was that education doesn't really prepare you for adulthood. It prepares you to be a cog in the system. So, for example, if Pythagorean theorem isn't relevant for your goals, then what should you learn instead to better prepare you for the future? So, this really addresses the concern of when, when am I going to use this in the real world that you hear all the time in schools? <laughs> Like ask, well, what will they need that school isn't teaching them today? And, and that's what a lot of parenting is. Like AI parenting is all about like, what are we missing <laughs> from school? You know, that they don't teach today that we need to know. We need to move from forced, like from forced learning to interest-based learning. And this notion of consent, this notion of agency um, is a recurring theme it's amazing. Like it just, it, it's really opened up my eyes to this perspective. Like when you've been told what to do your whole life, it's really, really hard to make good decisions when you have more freedom, right? Like you have to try and you have to fail. You have to make good decisions. You have to make bad decisions. And when we empower children to share their own passions and find their own path, Here's the benefit for us parents and adults is we feel less anxiety around being responsible for the outcomes of their lives. For example, if we control everything, tiger parent style, and they fail a test, we blame ourselves. And our child does not feel responsible at all. I, I just did whatever you told me to. Not my problem. Let them fail the test. Let them fail the test. It'll teach them about consequences for the long term. What's the consequence if you fail a test? Are you going to go back a grade? I know a lot of parents worry about that. I had a, a, a parent call me. He's like, oh, I'm really worried. I'm like, you have nothing to worry about. They didn't hand in an assignment. It does not mean that they're going to like be held, held back, if anything. They're going to learn more. Uh, unschooling is about resisting uh, this, this system of oppression 
by giving children agency to be their authentic selves and to discover who they are through, well, failures and successes. It conditions them to expect consent when it comes to what they learn. And it gives them the ability to push back and have their own ideas about what they will do. I love this idea. Like, it, it's, it's so crazy. But like, what if everything that you learned in school, you required consent? And if I don't, do not consent at the beginning of, of like this module, and I, I have all these questions, and I don't believe that it's ever going to be useful, then we don't teach it and we don't learn it. Because the reality is, like, if you've already made that decision at the beginning, what are you going to learn after they go through this? It's like, yeah, I'm just going to run through all these PowerPoints. I like this idea too, says Co. I love it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So I, I love that, you know, and I thought like consent, we don't ask for enough consent, but if the more like to me, it's like, what does agency mean? Agency is just consent. And so you want to give people more agency, give them, ask them, are you okay with us learning this? And if they say no, it's like, okay, either I got to step up my game as to why you need to learn this or we're not learning it. It's not to say that I won't teach the curriculum. I'll still teach the curriculum. But my responsibility as an adult or as a parent or as a teacher is um, no teaching you stuff that you don't consent to. If you are not bought into it, we're not learning it. So what does a typical day of this unschooling look like? Well, it's like everybody's having breakfast. Uh, it could also be doing projects based on their interests. Uh, it could be projects that are inspired by gaming. Uh, a lot of kids like Minecraft or Roblox. Uh, for example, creating these uh, Procreate images uh, that are drawn as a modification for Roblox. Why not? That's a way of learning. You can write stories about Minecraft. You need to learn writing anyways. Why not write it about the thing that you love? Learning to code may be kind of boring unless it's coding in your favorite game. Uh, and one of the things that she says was very important was having meals together to reflect and having a regular rhythm where kids can expect some things like play dates and play, uh, like play days and park days. Like if there's times where they want to play video games, like give them some predictability there. Now, not everybody can work this like, oh, just kind of fly on the seat of your pants. Some kids definitely prefer more structure. So in those kind of cases, the schedule could provide a much more predictable times to play together or to watch movies. But it's about being intentional. And, and this is important. Like, it's not just about how we're raising our kids, but being intentional about talking about how we were raised and standing in the shoes of our children when we talk about what they would like for the future. Um, we ask, like, how does our own practice gatekeep for this type of oppression? And I loved it. Like, you can't expect them to make good decisions if they never have a chance to make those decisions, as we've learned. And you can't expect them to make good, like, to learn stuff if they don't want to. If they're just going to refund it, not learn it anyways. And so this notion of no learning without consent very powerful. So Untigering, you can search it on Amazon. It's a book you can buy. It's very interesting to me. I love the concept of it because we've been, uh, especially in Asian cultures, it's very common, very common. It's like super strict. You, you will do this or else there will be punishment. Um, this is not something we're used to. And um, I will say like as myself, like how I was parented was it was very strict. It was the same, right? And yeah, maybe things turned out okay, but there's a lot of things that I could have learned were, which were actually quite interesting, but I didn't because I thought that they were boring. I had the wrong mindset. I had the wrong attitude about them since day one. 